Hi guys, car's back in the garage again. So this time we're doing camber. So camber is the angle that your wheel lies into your car. So you can have positive camber or negative camber. All cars mostly have negative camber or zero camber. So we're gonna go with a little bit of camber. Hey guys, so just some quick napkin maths. So it's zero degrees and 45 minutes and it's plus and minus 30. So we're going to do the negative 30 first. So we're going to take away 30 from 45, which gives us 15 minutes. And when we get 45 and we add 30 onto it, we get one degree and 15 minutes, or we can just convert that straight to minutes, because that's going to be 60. So we're going to add 50 onto it. So it's going to be 75. So now when we convert 15 minutes into degrees, we get 25 degrees, or sorry, 0 0.25 degrees. And when we convert 75 minutes into degrees, we get 1.25 degrees. So our camber gauge only reads in degrees, so that's why we want basically a quarter of a degree to one and a quarter degrees. And of course, both of these figures are negative because we've got negative degrees of camber. So those measurements were the min and max, and we want right in the middle, which is 45 minutes, which is equal to 0 0.75 degrees. So to calibrate the camber, the camber gauge. So this is a brilliant little gauge, you can buy them on eBay or Amazon or anywhere you want to buy them. And the way it works is they have a magnet on this side and an adjuster on this side. So first of all, I've seen hundreds of different ways of doing this, so this is my way of doing it, which I think is probably the easiest. So we're going to find a straight edge and we're going to calibrate this back to zero. So I have the spirit level, and we're going to put it up against the RSJ and we're going to calibrate it. It is as close as I can find to something that's level to zero. We have our spirit level, which is reading level. We put our camber gauge up to it. And of course, we're not accurate at all. And we can keep finally adjusting it, so we can either be negative, or move it back the other way. And we'll be positive, but we're gonna to try to aim for zero. So there's one degree of positive camber. Coming up to zero, maybe a bit more. And that's fairly bang on. And now we're at zero. So now that the camber gauge is calibrated to zero, let's go read what it is on the car. Okay, I've just done the most important step, which is obviously to pump up all the wheels to the correct PSI, because otherwise your car is going to sit all wonky, and um, you want to have the car totally level and with the right PSI in every wheel. Now we take our camber gauge, which we calibrated earlier on. We check the magnet. Magnet is loving clean. We check the disc that there's no lip, and there's not. This one is a, a fairly new disc, so there's no lip on it. Then we take our camber gauge. We stick one to the other, of course, making sure not to touch our adjuster. We're going to try and level this. We also want to make sure our steering wheel is straight as well, which it is. Go on, straighten up. There we go. So our wheel is lovely and straight to the car. And reading off that has negative, so that says negative, one and a half. So it's nearly actually correct. So I'm actually looking for one degree of negative camber rather than one and a half. So we know it is out by half a degree. So how do we adjust it? So we leave this now at one and a half. So we know we have to go back or give it a positive half a degree of negative camber. A positive camber, I should say. So we're going to do that by jacking up the car. Okay, so we pumped up the car. We have car all jacked up. Now we're going to read off what the negative camber is now. So currently it's reading negative three and a half. So the bubble is exactly at three and a half. So what we're going to bring it is from three and a half back to three, which is the same as when the car is actually on the ground, going from one and a half back to one. So I'm gonna have one degree of negative camber. So that's my plan. And how do I do it? Well, we're going to undo these 16 mil nuts, barely tap it back and then tighten it up. Just barely loosened. Now go back up the top and try and get a little bit of half degree. Okay, we're just going to give it a shove now. 
Okay. Now we're at three. So we were at three and a half, now we're at three. And uh, I'm going to go down and tighten up all the nuts and bolts. Okay. Okay, so that's now all the nuts and bolts tightened up. Let's go check what the camera reading is. Okay, so thankfully the reading hasn't changed, so it's still reading three. I'm going to let down the car back onto the ground. Now I have to bring the car for a quick drive to settle the suspension. Then I can read the true measurement. So guys, underneath the car yet again, and this time I'm going to set the camber. So these are your camber bolts, one, two and three. You undo these and you can slide the wheel in and out. So I currently have it off the ground and uh, I'm going to set the camber. So it's negative, so I want it, the wheels to be pointing, sloping in towards the car. And we want negative 0 0.25 all the way up to uh, 1.25. And that's negative for both of those measurements. So obviously the wheel is going to be negative camber in. So the way I did it was, I set the far side and the far side is now correct. And when I set this side, so from up here to the start of this tread, I measure it with the measuring tape and just be sure I'm right now, yeah. So it's 17.7 .7 to the to right up to the side of that, that there. And that gives negative 0 0.7 degrees of camber. So obviously if you increase this or decrease this, you'll change it. So that's how I did it. So if you want to set your camber, you can either set it to 18, which would be the maxed out at 1.25. And if you want what I have, it's 17.7. .7, and that gives you 0 0.7 de degrees of negative camber, or 0 0.7 degrees of negative camber. And um, yeah. So I've, obviously you have to jack up the wheel each time, and then every time you put it back down, you're not, it's going to be sprung loaded, so you're not going to get a correct measurement. So that's why I worked out where if you can work this distance here out, you can adjust it each time. And then obviously as you drive it forward and backwards and get the springs and the tire and, and the suspension all to sit down with load on it, then it's going to change again. So that's how you read your, your measurement. So as soon as you drop it, that's not when you read it. You have to settle the suspension and then read it. So unfortunately, I don't have wobble plates or camber adjustment plates. They sit underneath the tire and they allow a little bit of lateral movement and then twist as well. So I don't have any of them, but if you're a company and you want to sponsor me, I'd love a set. Or if you have them in your garage and you no longer want them, and hopefully you live in Ireland or you would like to post them to me, that'd be awesome. But um, that's how I did it for the moment. So we have our camber gauge back stuck to our brake disc. Let's have a look at it now. So we're on the negative side. There's zero, there's one. We're between the 0.5 and 1, so I'm going to call that 0.7, and that's a win. Perfect. So guys, I guess this is confession cam. Um, yeah, so I did an NCT, which is like a national road test, and failed because I had two broken rear springs. So because the springs are broken, I've since fixed them, but now all my alignment is wrong because the rear had to be changed. I thought there was nothing wrong with it, but um, unfortunately, yeah, the spring's broken, so have to be done so when the back has to be realigned when the back's been realigned they realign the front so yeah so i'm just gonna let the professionals do it i just can't I, I just don't want to go near the rear because i know it's rusty and it's probably not the easiest thing to align so i'm just gonna let the professionals do it so these are the measurements of both front and rear toe and camber you can see that my toe was dead on, but my camber on my tracking was way out front and rear. So it went back onto the rig and they adjusted it front and rear and now it's all running perfectly. So guys, that's now the Audi TV all fixed yet again. So if you like these videos, don't forget to rate, comment and subscribe. Support me in PayPal in the link below. And as always, thanks for watching. See you next time.